All right, so this is the little shitty toaster oven that I converted to PID control, meant for drying, uh, you know, like glass fiber nylons, polycarbonates, um, maybe even peak filament for 3D printing. It's worked okay, but it's never been great. Even though it is a convection oven, it does have a decent risk of melting things, um, just because the heating elements are in such close proximity. So this, is the new lab oven that I picked up for a pretty decent price. Uh, as you can see, it's slightly bigger and it is actually, you know, proper granted old laboratory equipment. But I don't think there's too much I'm going to need to change about this. It's a gravity convection oven, which means it just has a vent up here on the roof. No actual fan. So if you were uh, like powder sample drying, that would be agitated by forced airflow. That would be a bad thing. So this just uses natural convection to actually heat up evenly. It is pure analog control and that's what I'm going to be fixing today. So I was considering doing PID control for this, but I figure I'll just stick with the analog control for now. And I picked up a used Novus N 1540 process meter. Nice long K-type thermocouple. And we're just going to upgrade this thing with a little digital readout. So should be pretty quick. So, yeesh. nothing much to this, just a, not sure the rating, but just a potentiometer, it's kind of loose, and probably just pure analog circuitry for the actual uh, temperature control. Now this panel meter, um, I, it was like 60 bucks cheaper to get a used one, it sucked waiting, but this is like the better one where I can do RS-485 or I could do an analog signal out where basically you can feed a temperature sensor in and then you can also feed a signal back out transparently and I could have used the existing thermocouple in there I don't know what kind it is I figure this would also just be nice to have as sort of like a redundant um, just totally separate thing um, it seems like the power switch is maybe a little flaky or maybe it's something with this board but uh, yeah we got all sorts of room actually but just in terms of a spot where it would fit nicely I think we're still probably going somewhere here um, so I'll have to cut out a hole for that I don't think I'll bother you know recording that because it'll just be some tedious Dremel work and I'll have to mark all of these wires and stuff, or just undo them. So we'll come back when I actually have a hole cut to mount this thing out. All right, so this thing still needs a good clean and tighten up. But we can go ahead, turn her on, have our nice big temperature readout. If I go ahead and just put my hand on that one, you can see it's extremely responsive. It'll do up to 55 samples a second. I've got a little bit of smoothing on there, but that's still a very nice quick readout. And then if we go ahead, turn that up, should start seeing it rise here. And what I'm gonna have to do basically, um, is maybe see if I can find a manual. But what I'll do is I'll set this, actually that doesn't even go up to nine fully, is I'll set this to each sort of number, let it stabilize and see what temperature it is. Uh, and that way I'll actually be able to roughly dial in the temperature and preheat it without a lot of humming and hawing. You didn't think it was gonna be that easy, did you? All right, so a few days 
later or something. I don't know. I'm super tired. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's not that easy after all. Um, so I found some more information. Actually, maybe it's more like a week. Um, Thermo Fisher Scientific are the ones who made this originally back in the day. Turns out this lab oven is from 1980, no, 1996. Uh, so, you know, 28 years old or something like that. And when uh, I set it to a temperature, I did some logging with my multimeter and a thermocouple. Uh, it has a 10 degrees Celsius um, oscillation from the set point. So if you set it to 60 degrees, it's going to range from 55 to 65 to 55 to 65. That's really not good, especially considering this thing originally is supposed to be 0 0.4 degrees Celsius. So, after spending the money on this and also cutting a hole in it, it looks like I need to PID convert this oven after all. Which, you know, I was going to just keep the stock control, but that's not going to work. So, for now, I've got um, the PID controller out of my old oven. I did get a larger... Um, so this is one eighth din. Uh, this is, you know, din is like the standard sizing for industrial stuff. This is one eighth din. It's twice as wide as one sixteenth. There aren't really any one eighth din PID controllers I can get easily. There is a pretty cool one on AliExpress that has like a, a bar graph to show the, I think the PID, like the duty cycle of how much percentage it is. Uh, so if it's like doing... 50% duty cycle or 60% it's it's you know at the 60% mark on the bar it's pretty cool that's available in that size uh I picked up a 1 8 din um no a 1 quarter din uh so double the height PID controller like this but it seems pretty garbage and plasticky and shitty and it uses um just a normal relay for the output this one supports a solid state relay the one in this profile on AliExpress does have a solid state relay output built in, but it would take quite a while to arrive. So I may just take this, pop it in there with a second thermocouple, um, and then maybe this one only turns on when I have temperature control, and this one shows me the temperature at all times. I don't know. Less than ideal, that means more cutting and shit that I have to do. But... You gotta do what you gotta do. So it looks like our heating elements are split in half with the common neutral and then live going to either side or perhaps vice versa depending on the wiring order. So that's one thing I wasn't too sure about. I'll also give this thing a clean out. Um, uh, and that is where the air intake comes through for the actual convection effect. There's um, little holes right around in there. Okay, well, annoyingly, I thought I had uh, recorded that, but I did not press record. <laughs> so, that's fucking annoying. Um, but yeah, I just reused some of the wiring that I already had in here. I have the solid state relay hooked up. I'm just switching live to the center point, and then neutral is coming off to the other two, just off the main bus bar, so we have live and neutral coming in. Feed for the PID controller. And then these three are the heating elements. And then the other two wires are actually the thermal cutout that's in the back of the oven. Uh, so if we go ahead and give her power, it lights up. I just need uh, to set, need to go get a precision screwdriver to hook up the uh, thermal couple to this PID controller. And then should be good to give it a test run, make sure everything heats up and then uh, see how stable it is without uh, any sort of auto-tuning or anything like that on this one. Alright, so the thermocouple is hooked up. One degree Celsius. 
Output is on. Relay is on. And so if we go ahead and take a look with the thermal camera. Very lovely picture in picture. Oh, and it would also help if that was focused. Uh, yeah, looks like everything is heating up. So I'm going to end up uh, just setting that to 40 Celsius, and then we're going to see how stable it is, because that's kind of the main one of the main um, one of the main temperatures that I'm going to actually be running this thing at. So, all right, so uh, it's been running at 60 for an hour and a half or so right now, and this is the old PID pro, or not even PID. This is the old temperature profile. So this was set with the analog dial. And you can see that it's basically, it's set at 60, but it's it's dipping under and over constantly. So that old control board, whatever is wrong with it, causes huge temperature fluctuations. But if we switch over to our PID controller, you can see it takes, I'd say longer, yeah, longer to get up to, to temperature, a lot uh, more gradual but then you can see we're much more stable. Now the it seems like the thermocouple for my multimeter is not great. And of course there's just temperature differences in terms of, you know, I'm using a stainless steel probe thermocouple on the um, actual PID controller, just a loose wire one for the uh, multimeter. But the temperature calibration is less of the important thing. The important thing is, do I have a stable temperature? And the answer is yes. So. All right, so it's a few days later and we are all set and done. Um, yeah, so what I did is I took the old um, sort of cheap Inkbird PID controller out of the old toaster oven as well as the um, solid state relay that was with it. I decided I'm just not going to ever use that toaster oven again. I thought maybe for curing airbrush enamels it might be handy, but it's still... You know, I'd, I've got such a better option than a hack job toaster oven. So I've got a little uh, temperature chart for materials right there. And then I've got the um, Novus N1050 display still there. I figured instead of 3D printing a little gap adjustment thing or anything, um, what I would do is I ordered a K-type thermocouple socket, a couple small and a couple full-size ones. And I thought it would be good to be able to switch to another thermocouple. So basically you can have your internal temperature, which is one of the two thermocouples up top in the lab oven. Or if you want to measure a specific spot, you can plug in a probe, switch to the external input, and you can monitor the temperature like that. So you can, you can get an overall idea of the lab oven temperature. This one updates faster than this does. Um, and just based on the fact that this is a proper instrumentation device versus kind of a generic cheap PID controller, I figure this one's a little more accurate than the PID controller as well. Um, but yeah, it's all set up and seems to be working great. Holds within like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a degree once it stabilizes in. It doesn't overshoot much. The only reason it's so much higher than the set point right now is that I... Um, I had the door open a bunch while working on it. I went ahead and replaced the switch with one with a neon just because, you know, it's a 30 year old switch or whatever now. Um, and then yeah, for wiring on the inside, it's still not, you know, super neat or anything. It could be a lot better, but you know, you're never gonna see it. The other day I went and put a good uh, eight spools or seven spools of filament in and a bag of desiccant and I wasn't even half full. So this lab oven, I should be able to fit like, I don't know, 20 spools of filament in it or something if I really wanted to. Um, it's kind of insane. It's, it's you know, it's massive. There are those two thermocouples right up there, which are what are actually reading for the PID controller in this readout. Um, and yeah, this is basically the ultimate filament dryer. So I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I've wanted one for a while, but you know, this sort of thing is real expensive when it comes to shipping. So I was able to find a company that was going to use it for something else and it ended up not working for them. So I'll just go 
put the screws in for this and then we're all set. Oh, also, for thermocouple wiring, it seems like the switch hasn't caused an issue, but I originally just used some copper wire to go between the switch and the Novus, and also between the switch and this um, thermocouple connection. And just the connection from the switch over to the instrument panel was giving me several degrees of inaccuracy using copper wire. So you want to use some off-cut thermocouple wiring for anything in line with a the thermocouple. Even a couple inches of copper wire is going to cause you problems.